What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Shane Rowe. Guys, grab your Yardie's coffee, hit that like button and that subscribe button. Thank you very much. And let's get caffeinated. Now guys, in the third episode of our top five Jamaicans performing around Europe, you guys seem to like the, the series. And I don't mind doing it, man. It's, it's, it's work, but I get to know more of the players and we get to see who is keeping up that form leading back into the next international break, right? So let's get right into it, guys. Coming in at number five is Mr. Casey Palmer. And he's been in the he's been in it for I think the past three weeks. I think he's been in all three weeks, right? But Casey Palmer coming in at number five with an overall 7.1 rating. Um, he plays for Hull City as a central midfielder, and he played for 58 minutes. He, in a 3-1 win over QPR, Queen's Park Rangers, and he had one shot off target, 85% passing, which is pretty good, 33 touches, one in the final third. We got to get more passes inside that final third. 100% long ball. And guys, even if they're one or two, I always tell you, we have to take those. We have to practice them because if we have height advantage on any of these teams, we got to use that. And crosses and long balls are what we're going to need for the counterattacks and, 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 and quick quick set pieces or, 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 or heading chances. So 100% tackles, one clearance, one interception, one recovery, Four out of six duels won, pretty good. 67% ground duels won, 67% aerial duels won, and one foul committed, and one time um, he was fouled. So he was mixing up in the midfield, 58 minutes, not a bad, um, not a bad shift. So Casey Palmer, good job with a 7.1, and holding it down for the championship because you know, the, the Premier League had a statement this week, guys. And coming in at number four is Mikel Antonio. Now, he's been on the outside looking in for this past couple of weeks, so I'm glad to see him finally make it, actually. So Mikel Antonio, who started as a striker for West Ham in the Premier League, he played for 75 minutes with an overall rating of 7.0. And I gave him the four because... Again, the competition is a little bit more stiffer inside the Premier League, guys. Tell me what you think, if you agree. Now, it was a 1-1 draw against Benford, which is p -knock, so we'll talk about that in a second. He had one assist, three shots, two off target, and one was blocked. So he's still doing his thing in terms of attempting to, do, to, to, to get those goals. 83% passing. One chance created, 29 touches, and two inside the box. Now, for the touches, um, amazing amount of touches, meaning like you're getting, you're getting into the game, but we got to get those inside the box touches a lot more and a lot more frequent, right? Three passes in the final third. He did get the assist, so Anthony tends to... If he's not doing the, the scoring, he tries to help and provide. So that's a good job. Um, one, cr crosses were poor, but at least you're still attempting them, right? As long as you're attempting them, and again, helping out with the assists. So practice builds habits, so keep it up. 10 dues one. So he was mixing it up inside the box with two fouls. So. Antonio, good job sneaking in there for this week. I'm, I'm, I'm happy about it, especially with the, the game vastly approaching, bringing up that form right in time. Right? So, number three, Mr. Ethan Pina, who played against Mikel Antonio in the Brentford game, and he played centre-back for Brentford. He played the full 90 minutes, and he came out with a 7.1 overall rating. Um, a 1-1 one -one draw. He had a 91% passing. 91% passing for your centre-backs. This is, this is what you want to see. 88 touches, 
nine passes in the final third for your center back. Three out of seven long balls, so 43% accuracy, which again, just keep keep trying. Keep keep them up. If we don't try them, we're not gonna get better at them. So as long as we're as long as we're attempting them, we'll get better at them. Four clearances, one interception, two recoveries, ten duels, seven seven of those duels were won, a hundred percent ground duels and sixty-three percent aerial duels, and he was fouled one time. Really good game. If he got the clean sheet, it means Antonio might have not gotten on the list. So they share the spoils a bit for this week, right? So at number three, Mr. Pinock, good job, keep it up. He's also been on the outskirts looking in for a couple of weeks. So I'm glad to see him finally get those numbers where, where we need them. Uh, number two, and as well, you want to see these guys right before... The international break hit top form. Mr. Leon Bailey for right wing. He played for Villa at 64 minutes with a 7.2 overall rating. And that was a 2-2 draw with Ipswich Town. He got one assist, 83% passing, one chance created, 39 touches, two inside the box, two passes in the final third, 100% crosses, 50% long balls, keep them up. One clearance, four recoveries, two out of seven dues won, right? 100% of his aerial dues were won, though. Go figure. And 17% of his ground duels, and was fouled once, and he committed three fouls. So, again, mixing it up, recoveries, you see him coming back, helping out with the clearances. And uh, he got the assist. So like uh, Mikel Antonio, when you can't be the one scoring the goals, at least you can be the one helping out the team, providing those assists. So, so good job for Liam Bailey. I've been wanting him to get on the list for a while now and to push it up so high as to get in right, right, below, right below number one and getting in number two. Uh, I'd love to see it, especially right before the international breaks because we're going away from home, so... We're going to be in hostile territory, and we're going to need to be on our P's and Q's. Now, guys, before we tell you about number one, and I think by now you can assume who is number one, but before we get there, Mr. Kevon Lambert, Kevon Lambert, good job for the week, and he almost stuck in there, but keep up the form, and, you know, we'll get you in there next week, right? So, coming in at number one is Jamil Waite. I believe that's how he pronounced his name, if I'm, I apologize. But coming in at number one is Mr. Jamil Waite, our goalkeeper. And he's the second goalkeeper taking in the number one spot for, for, the, for the second week running. So, guys, you love to see it. it the goalkeepers are, are doing the thing. Um, he plays for El Paso Locomotive. And he played for all 90 minutes with a 7.5 overall rating and a 1-0 win over North Carolina FC, right? So he got his clean sheets, two saves. One of those was a dive-in save, 72% uh, passing, 38% long ball. So even our goalkeepers need to get better at, at pinpointing those long passes. One high claim. 13 recoveries and 43 touches and guys I, you know when i saw the numbers for this week i was so happy that the goalkeeper blake he was he didn't do so well this week but jamil came came out of nowhere and, and and took the reins and again when you can see that the goalkeepers outside of the number one goalkeeper is still keeping that form up and still can get a clean sheet and, and the 72% passing and the, the 13 recoveries, despite being the, the number one goalkeeper for the national team, you know that if Blake ever needs, we have a, we have a good suitable goalkeeper to back him up. So guys, that's the list for this week. I mean, I want to give a, a shout out again to um, 
Casey Palmer because he's been keeping up that form. We definitely know one of the midfielders that's starting the game come come the tent. So Casey Palmer, all of the guys too, to be honest with you, the numbers are very close. When when you see them, they're close. Sometimes it's by one or by two points and, and people get knocked out of the list. But that's why it's the top five, man. So guys, that's the list for this week. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you agree with the list, if you like the list. Um, and uh, we got the game in a couple of weeks. So we'll... We'll reconvene and talk about that before the game starts and see who do we think should be on that starting 11, right? So, guys, like the video, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Peace.